host, Dr. Lachelle Weenie, a peak performance coach and business strategist dedicated to helping you see what's possible within you, the blind spots that are holding you back, and the solutions to ensure success and fulfillment without the hustle. I use my secret sauce of metaphysics, brain science, and scripture to work with God to manifest your ideal life and business. If you're ready to create massive forward momentum in your business and bust through the blocks that drag you down, join me on the spiral up journey and create the clarity, confidence, and consistency to become the CEO that lives your life by design. It's time to create the sustainable impact, income, and time freedom you desire faster. Now is the time to spiral up. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Spiral Up Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lachelle Weenie. It is so fun to be here for another episode of really trying to empower you, to help you to step into the very best version of yourself so that you can live your life by design, so that you can create the business of your dreams, so that you can make the impact and the income that you've always longed to make. And today, what I want to do is really focus on how to get your power back. And so I'm just going to ask you guys, like, have you ever felt like life is happening to you and not for you, right? Like maybe you have this big dream, but you're finding that your support system doesn't get it. And you don't feel like you're very supported by your support system, right? Maybe you just don't have the time or the money to do everything that you want to do, or you just lack the knowledge, or you don't think that you maybe were born into the right life and you just don't have the resources that, that other people do. All of those things can make us feel like we're being held back. Those things can make us feel like we're losing our power. We also might be in a situation where we thought we would be further along by now. I've been there too, right? Like you have these really big audacious goals and you're like, but I'm doing all the dang things. Like, why am I not seeing the results that I thought I was going to be seeing by now, right? So those things can definitely all make us feel like we're stuck, that we we're swimming in the pudding pool, like I sometimes will call it. And I want you guys to know that I understand how you feel. I've been there. I felt like I had lost all my power before. And I want to give you guys some tools today that are going to help you to gain your power back. And the really cool thing is that these are things that you already have within you, and I cannot wait to share it. So and the first thing that I want to do is mention to you guys that I had the opportunity to announce on last week's podcast that I have a very special project that I have been working on, which is a release of the audio version of Get Out of God's Way that's going to be coming to you guys anytime now. And so make sure that you guys head on over to getoutofgodsway.com backslash audiobook. And we are going to make sure that you get all of the details that you need so that you have access to it. And I am running a very amazing special where you can get access to the audio version and some bonus material for $4.99, like $4.99, because I just want to get the word out. I want to get God's word out and I can't wait to help as many people as possible. So if you haven't already, go on over to getoutofgodsway.com backslash audiobook and let's get you guys all of the details that you need. But let's get started on today's lesson. All right. So first thing I want you guys to do is I want you to think about what is something that you would love to accomplish? Like what is a goal that you have a big, audacious, amazing thing that you would love to accomplish someday? Maybe it is, you know, earning a certain amount in your business. Maybe it's leaving your corporate job for full-time entrepreneurship. Maybe it's, you know, I don't even know something personal in your life. I want you guys to think about what is something that you would absolutely love, all right? And I want you to take a moment and just like be in this space, right? And I want you to ask yourself, like, what would that feel like when that actually happens? What would that feel like to know that the impact that you were going to make with this goal is happening who would be impacted and how? I want you to, to think about how would this add to your life if this goal were to be you know, met? I want you to think about that. I want you to really allow yourself to live in that moment, right? How does that feel? Does it feel good? Heck yeah, it does, right? Like you feel like, woohoo, I am on top of the world, right? But then the next thing that I'm going to have you think about can sneak in. And these are the things that are holding you back from having that happen in your life. So now I want you to think about like, what are the things in your life that are holding you back? What is 
keeping you stuck? Is it a lack of money? Is it a lack of time? Is it a lack of resources? Is it a lack of courage? Is it, you know, honestly, our fear is the thing that are holding you back. Are there, are there people in your life that are holding you back? What is it that is keeping you from achieving that goal? What has kept you from achieving that goal up to this point? Because oftentimes a lot of us have had the same thing on our hearts for a really long time. What has been keeping you up until now from actually achieving what you have set out to do? Maybe it's writing a book, starting that podcast, starting your coaching program, starting your business. What is it that you would love to do? And what has kept you from achieving that up to this point? And I'm going to ask you this. How does that list make you feel? When you think about those things that are holding you back, that are preventing you, that are keeping you stuck, how do you feel right now? That is when I feel powerless. That's when I feel like I'm a victim to something. That is when I feel like I'm subject to something outside of my control and it sucks, right? And oftentimes when we get stuck there, it's really hard to see our way out of it. But one of the things that I want to tell you guys today, and this is the secret to getting your power back, is that I truly believe that all of us have been given a superpower from God, every single one of us. And you know what that superpower is? It's a superpower of choice. It's a superpower of free will. I get to choose whether or not I'm going to remain a victim to those things that have been holding me back. I'm going to choose to remain a hostage to those things that are keeping me stuck, or I get to choose to focus my energy, my attention, my resources, my time on the things that I need to do to make it happen, to focus my time, my energy, my resources on ways to overcome the things that have been holding me back. Now, I'm going to tell you a story of two really, really important people in my life. One of them I knew personally, and and that was my grandma, Max, who unfortunately has passed away, and I miss her dearly. And the other person is Viktor Frankl, who is the author of um, Man's Search for Meeting, and he is a concentration survivor. And so first, my grandma. So my grandma was an incredible woman. She's somebody that I have looked up to my whole life. She's somebody who I emulated, who I wanted to be like. I saw her as a woman who was hilarious, but she was so classy, and she always like she always was put together. Her house was put together. She she was approachable, but yet she just had this like air about her. But she, you guys, honestly, was she was hilarious and she was positive and she had this faith that was beyond anything that I had seen in anyone else. All right. The thing about her is that she had a really crappy life. So when she was 10 years old, her dad died of tuberculosis from the war. Six months, within six months, her mom had passed away of the flu. And at 10 years old, she was without parent. Now, thankfully, her grandparents were willing to take her and her siblings in, and they moved from Minnesota to California to live with them. But after a couple of years, her asthma just was not doing well in that environment, and so they sent her back to Minnesota. And she came back to Minnesota. She stayed with another relative, but unfortunately, that family had lost a son to polio. And in their grief, in their lack of coping, treated my grandma and her brother that came with her terribly. They, they didn't let her mop the farm. My grandma was not allowed to go to high school. It was not a good situation. Fast forward a couple years later, my grandma joined the Navy. She, she was thriving. She came back to Minnesota. She met my grandpa. The two of them got married and ended up having seven children. But in that span of those seven kids, two of them unfortunately passed away. One of them was born with a hole in his heart. And back in in the day, back in the 50s, the doctors actually thought that it would be better for him to be stronger before they did surgery. And so they waited until he was four. Now we know that heart muscles actually get weaker. And that's what happened. And he unexpectedly died in surgery. A couple of years later, my, my other uncle was hit by a car as he was crossing the highway to help my grandpa on the farm. And my grandma and my aunt happened to come upon the scene and saw my uncle laying dead in the middle of the highway. 
Now you can imagine she lost both of her parents at a young age. She had lost two children, two children. This woman, you guys, had every reason, every reason to be bitter and angry and just have a have a chip on her shoulder, hold a grudge and think that life is unfair. She had every reason to be that, but she didn't. Instead, she chose to have a faith that, that moved mountains. She chose to be funny. She chose to be positive. She chose to be a light. And I cannot say, because I'm not her, how hard it was. I, I, don't, I don't know how she got through all of that. But I do know that every day she chose to find meaning in it. She chose to find the lessons. She chose to find the good in things. She chose to show up each day the best that she could. Now, I had other people in my life that I grew up with that I watched. I'm an, ob I'm an observer. I'm, I like to just learn and, and gain wisdom from watching other people and their experiences. And I watched you know other members of my family, other people that I grew up with who who felt like life had owned them something, who felt like life was unfair, who woke up every day angry and bitter and didn't want to participate in life. And they blamed things and they blamed people and, and they never found that joy back. But honestly, watching my grandma, I had to recognize that it was a choice that she had to consciously make every day. And I am guessing that some days that choice was hard, but she still chose. Now, the other person that I wanted to mention is Viktor Frankl, and I am so impressed by this man. I first heard about him when I was listening to another book by Sean Igor in The Happiness Advantage, and he mentioned Victor, Victor Frankl. So, of course, I had to go in and get his book as well. And in his book, he talked about how he was a Nazi concentration survivor. He was a psychiatrist, and he spent a lot of time in the camp observing, observing himself, observing other people. But he was not immune to all of the, the things that were happening there. And at some point in his journey, he, he wrote about how he was, you know, malnourished. He was sickly. He was just had no energy. He had been beaten. He had no clothes on. So he was naked. He, all of his family and his friends were killed. So he literally was stripped of everything. And at one point, a guard had noticed that he still had his wedding ring on and they demanded that he give it back or give that to him. And he's like, here I am. I've been stripped of my dignity. I've been stripped of my health. I've been stripped of my family, my friend. I've been stripped of my, my clothing. I've been stripped of, of, of everything. And now they're taking the one last thing from me. But I still choose to control my attitude. They cannot take that from me. They cannot take my attitude and I choose to rise up. I choose to overcome this. I choose to not let them win. If you want to get your power back, friend, you have to decide that you are no longer going to allow yourself to stay victim to what has happened to you or what is happening to you or what seems to be happening to you. And you get to choose to rise above. Now, some of you have had really terrible things happen to you, and I want you to hear this with all sincerity. I am giving you this gigantic hug right now, saying I am so sorry that that is something that you've had to endure. But I'm also going to, in that truth with the hug, tell you that while you are not responsible for everything that has happened to you, you are responsible for what you do with the life that you've been given. You are responsible for what you do with the situation that you've been dealt and how you choose to overcome it is up to you. You can either choose to let it define you to create a situation where you stay victim to that circumstance, or you can choose to rise above it and gain your power back. The choice is yours. You can either choose to give in, give up, and give away your power, or you can choose to utilize things like the God-given talents that you were born with, the, the fact that you have an amazing support system around you that can help you, including me. Reach out if I can help, right? Like, you are not alone in this. 
you have the ability to gain all of the experience from the things that you've had to overcome. And you have skills that you have acquired throughout your lifetime. And you can use those to choose to find solutions instead of excuses. You can choose to take your power back. You can choose to rise up and make it happen. But the choice is yours. So where are you focusing? Where is the choice that you're making? Now, one of my absolute favorite books that I that I recommend to anybody who has ever felt powerless to their circumstances is a book called The Oz Principle. It's a it's a book that I have literally read multiple times. I've had it on my bookshelf for years now. And in that book, they talk about the difference between personal accountability and the victim cycle. So within this, they describe a line, and that line is the line of, line of personal accountability. It's really where I decide that I am 100% responsible for my life and the choices that I have, right? So that line is that line of personal accountability. Below the line is the victim cycle. This is the blame game. This is where I get to blame all of the circumstances, all of the people, all of the situations, all of the lack of resources, all of the things that have gone wrong. And I get to choose to continue to blame them for my lack of success, for my lack of follow through, for my lack of consistency, for my lack of whatever. And I get to continue to blame the things that are outside of my control and literally stay in this victim cycle stay in the victim cycle. I have literally given away my power to all of these things. And when I am giving away my power, how can I get it back? The moment that you get your power back is you decide that your life is your responsibility and that you get to choose to no longer stay stuck down in the blame game in the victim cycle, but you get to choose to rise above it. And in that book, they talk about how you get to see, you get to see the situation for what it is. You get to own your part in it. You get to decide what needs to be done. And then you get to do, you get to follow through on it. And instead of this unbelievable, you know, vacuum of despair and cycle of, of victimhood and blame, like a drain, you actually are stair stepping up to success because you see it, own it, solve it, and do it. That, my friend, is how you get your power back. You get to choose to say, you know what? Yes, yes, that happened to me, but no, I will not let that indicate who I am or what I'm capable of. Get your spiciness out. Get your, get your, your determination out and decide that your life is your responsibility and that you're going to figure it out come hell or high water. And so here's my another truth of the hug. You can take a look at all of the things that are holding you back from making that wish, that dream, that goal that you had at the beginning of this podcast. And you can say to yourself, you know, yeah, these are all the things that have been holding me back up until now. And you can look at them in a couple of different ways. One, you can look at them as your list of excuses. Sometimes that's just what we need to do is see what, see it for what it is, right? Look at your list of excuses. Now, there are going to be things on that list that are out of your control. There are going to be things on that list that are out of your control, but this is where you get to harness the power of people like Viktor Frankl that said, if he can do it, so can I. This situation that I'm in is nowhere near the situation he was in. So if he can do that in that situation, I can do that in this one. Let that be an inspiration. If they can do it, so can you. And so you're looking at it like, okay, that is out of my control, but they cannot take my attitude. And you get to choose the attitude of, I'm either going to let that beat me, or I'm going to give in, or I'm going to rise above and I'm going to figure this out. Choose your attitude on the things that you cannot control. But the things you can control, it's time to start kicking the butts out of your situation. I would do it, but. I would try, but. I would call that person, but. I would be consistent, but. And it's time to kick those butts out of the way. Recognize them for what they are. As excuses, they're the butts that are holding you back. And it's time then to start thinking about solutions. What are some things that you can try? Who can you start talking to? What can you learn? Where can you start saving money or cutting money out of your budget? 
where are things that you can just need some some big girl pants on and, and put some courage on for today and stop, and stop letting the fear take over? Where do you need to just button up your time management or get some help with some you know people who actually know how to do that stuff? How can you automate things? How can you create systems that allow for you to keep going? And stop letting the damn excuses keep you from your divine calling, from everything that you're capable of, from the life that you describe as you thought about it at the beginning of the show. Knock the excuses, the can'ts, the buts out of the way and start to think about what resources, what knowledge, what can I do to make this different? Friend, I don't know about you, but even me talking about this has given me a sense of my power back. The more that you allow yourself to stay victim to the situation, the more you're going to stay a victim. But the moment that you decide to use your superpower of free will and choose to rise above, to choose to be resourceful, to choose to not give up or give in, you have literally taken the first step towards the life of your dreams, towards the life that you have been destined to have. Life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. Yes, you have some things that have happened to you, but you get to decide how you take those situations and turn them into good. How can you take that and use it to prove to yourself that you're capable? How can you take that and use it to help somebody else who's been in the situation that you are in or were in? How can you use it to make this world better, you better, the situation better? Life is not happening to you, friend. It is happening for you. The choice is yours. The power is yours. You hold all the power. Now I want you to choose. I hope you're feeling better. I hope that you are ready to freaking kick today's butt. I am hopeful you are ready to no longer allow the things that are holding you back and the excuses to keep you from your amazing, amazing destiny. And if you guys need more tools on how you can kick the butts out of your life, out of the butts, out of your business to, to get the, the resources, the knowledge, the inspiration that you need to start to tackle those excuses, to start tackling those barriers, I want you to absolutely make sure that you check out the Get Out of God's Way audiobook because it is going to give you several chapters on how you can make that happen. Because ultimately, my friend, I want you to live your life by design. I want you to be able to to prove to yourself what you're capable of. I want at the end of your life, people to say, because of her, I did this, this, and this. I want you to be the inspiration to others and to your dang self because you've chosen sometimes when it was hard. Because I believe in you. I know what's possible if you start believing in you too. And it's time to start leaning in and freaking figuring it out. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. We're going to be back next week, same time, same place. And of course, make sure that you don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, leave a review, all the things, because it's so much fun for me to hear from you. And I just really, really want you to know that I believe in you. So let's kick the butts, guys. Let's do this. Bye. So much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. Each honest review helps me spiral up so that I can serve you even better. Whether you're feeling a lack of impact, income, or time freedom, or perhaps you're just ready for massive momentum in your business, let's chat. Apply for a breakthrough call so that you can gain clarity, identify what's holding you back, and make a plan to spiral up. Head on over to im-lifebydesign.com backslash breakthrough or access the link in the show notes. For immediate support, log into our community, The Better Club. We focus on inspiration, tactical guidance, and support. This is a community that wants to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business, and we're going to help you do the same. Let's spiral up, friends.